Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I introduce to you the Flying 18650. I'm going to show you exactly what parts I used and how to build this. This whole thing started as a crazy thought of let's just throw a quadcopter together from the old parts bin. And then I saw I had a bunch of these little 18650s laying around and the wild thought came to me, let's stick it on this teeny little quadcopter, this thing's 80 millimeters, and see if it flies. I didn't think it was going to, but to my surprise, <laughs> it flew decently. Um, and even more surprisingly, it flew for over 18 minutes. So I shared it on Reddit, and a lot of people want to know how to build it, so here's this video. Here's the 80 millimeter frame. Seems really sturdy, lots of holes to mount stuff. Cost around six bucks. I used a Matrix 4-in-1 flight controller under the receiver here. Works good so far. Above that, you could probably see the Zeus Nano VTX with a 350 milliwatt output power. Costs around 20 bucks. Here is the HGLRC M100 Mini GPS for around 20 bucks, super lightweight, and it is awesome. Here are some motors I've been really impressed with. The only thing I don't like about them are the wires are not silicone, but besides that, they're great. They're cheap, 15,000 kV, 1103 motors. For the props, I just had some good old Gemfan 45 millimeter tri-blades laying around, so I threw them on there. For the camera, I had a million of these Cadex ants laying around. They're super cheap and I knew I was going to break a ton of them. They're the best price to value in my opinion. This is a Beta FPV Air Canopy and I've just clipped off the tail and then you switch it upside down and mount it onto the top like so. And here are some generic battery holders that come with the frame. For hardware, I used M1.4 bolts for the motors, M2 bolts to hold the electronics onto the frame, M2 bolts to hold on the canopy, and then some M2 nuts to hold everything together. Also need some M2 shock absorbers. So before you go ahead and touch that soldering iron, you're gonna wanna hook up your flight controller to Betaflight, make sure the gyro's working, and then I like to dry fit all the parts to see how long all the wires are going to need to be. In my video, you're going to see everything's already soldered, and that's because there are so many soldering tutorials online. Go find a good one if you need it. My greatest advice is just invest in a really good soldering iron. I can vouch for this one. The link for it will be in the description. It's only 50 bucks, so not bad at all. Adjustable temperature. Here, get some good solder. You want stuff with lead in it. I'll link this one down below. It works amazing and some flux. That will help more than anything else. Okay, finally piecing everything together. Make sure your flight controller is pointing forwards. Then we're gonna just thread in those longer bolts onto the four corners. And then here I was showing you those antennas need to go through that little slot in the front. The longer two millimeter bolts will go through that hole. And then I had to sand a little groove into it because these battery holders are not meant for 18650s. It is a tight squeeze um, for that cord to fit in there. You'll use the M2 shock absorbers on all four corners of the flight controller. There are the red ones. And then I cut some blue ones in half um, to give us enough space for the receiver not to hit the flight controller. We'll thread it all through that hole in the frame and then stick a nut on top and screw it in. Here is the first side. You're simply gonna repeat the process for the other side. Now here is a third battery holder, which I simply just cut the edges off and I'm gonna use it to mount the GPS in the back. Slide it through the hole in the corner and then tie in on a nut afterwards. And here on the last corner, you don't have anything to mount on. So you just slide in that longer screw. And this one needs to be sh slightly shorter than the other ones to make them all level and then put the nut on. I would highly recommend using thread locker to put on all your screws because they will come loose very easily. All you need is a teeny little dab for each piece. So sadly, this frame does not have the correct size mounting holes, so you have to put your own in. I used a 1 16th inch drill bit, and it is a little difficult to be honest. Just go slow, measure it out. 
um, and I only used two holes per motor and they hold in really well. Make sure to put some thread locker on there and they will not come loose. Now it's kind of difficult to see, but there are a couple holes right in the front there, and that's where we're gonna put our six millimeter M2 bolts to hold on the camera canopy. Um, this part, it can be a little bit tricky, but just line it up and then thread it through the canopy. It should be the perfect size to thread into the air canopy. Then I would just put on both sides, make sure the camera is pointing up, and voila, there you have it. So I just got this double-sided sticky foam tape from the local hardware store. I'm showing you how I just cut it out and put it onto the back end there so that I could mount the GPS. Make sure to use the thread locker on the motor screws as well. You only have two of them um, and anything metal to metal really should have thread locker on it. When it's all done, it should all be sitting slightly above the ground with enough room for the props to move. The most important part of this build is the 18650 battery. Its high capacity is what allows this little guy to fly for so long. However, it has one big problem, and that is the discharge rating isn't as good as your traditional LiPo. To get past that, not all 18650s are created equally. You just need to buy a higher discharge one. Um, I recommend at least 20 amps discharge. This one is 25 amps. It's a Sony VTC 5D. Also make sure you get a good trusted 18650. Do your research. Lastly, the other problem is you need to put some kind of connector directly onto here. And the manufacturers don't recommend you direct solder to the 18650s. Um, and I cannot recommend direct soldering onto the 18650s either, even though that is what I did. There are tons of tutorials out there, but I'll leave that up to your discretion. Um, however, I'm talk if you don't want to do that, I'm talking to a battery manufacturer who I want to get them to add on the plugs so that it'll be done safely. Um, and you'll be able to buy these 18650s, hopefully for a really good price with the plugs on it and then everyone will have access to this. Now the question is, how does this thing actually fly? I originally thought it hovered around 35% throttle, but now I can see it's closer to 45 to 50%. Here's a full throttle so you can see what kind of acceleration it has. Actually not too bad, getting up to 70 kilometers per hour or about 45 miles an hour. However, you'll see later on that pretty quickly this power dies out as the voltage drops. First, I wanna cover all the cons and I'll cover the pros later. So the most apparent thing is just lack of power compared to another whoop. You can really feel the weight, um, even though it does have decent acceleration at the start of the battery. My guess is that this increased weight will also lead to decreased durability. However, I have crashed this thing a couple times and it's still running fine. While it does fly all right, I can definitely, I'm definitely getting vibrations in the wind probably due to its small size and a decent amount of prop wash on certain maneuvers. The quad is not tuned, so that could be something improved in the future. Right here, I decided to do a little bit more of a acro maneuver, even though this doesn't even really count as anything. I'm gonna get quite a bit of prop wash, not able to recover. Okay, lastly, I just wanna talk about the camera and the video transmitter range. So this is the Cadex Ant Light, which is on the lowest end of the spectrum for price. Um, and you kind of pay for that, as you can see, not the best. Another thing is the VTX was, the antenna was mounted in front of the battery. So I didn't realize once I started getting really far away, it became really apparent that the battery was blocking the video connection. As you can see here, I turn around, the battery is blocking it. And then as soon as I'm facing myself, that antenna is facing me and it becomes a whole lot clearer. Here, I'm kind of doing a range test I was only able to get 600 meters out, which is way further than you would think. But I think it would be a lot more impressive to be able to get at least a kilometer out. And I think repositioning that antenna would do it. On to the things I've loved about this little quadcopter. The first thing, it's really obvious, the battery. 
I never thought such a big battery could fit on a teeny little quadcopter, but it is amazing. Spoiler alert, I get over 10 minutes of flight time with semi-aggressive maneuvers, um, and that was after it sat in the grass while I was trying to find it after it crashed for like five minutes just using battery. With careful cruising and going down pretty far on the battery voltage, I bet you could get over 20 minutes pretty easy with this same exact setup. The next big plus for this thing is the price. These are all budget parts, meaning in the end it's around 100 bucks. I'll put on the screen the exact amount it costs me. And even on this budget price, you're getting a GPS, which is just insane. I have loved being able to see my speed, home direction, and distance from home. Um, especially when this is supposed to be a long range. Like, it's not really a long range. It's more of a mid-range build. And with something this small, pretty hard to get actual long range, but we're going to be improving it. Anyway, it wouldn't be long range without the GPS, and it has it. While the size of this thing might be considered a negative in some ways, as it might get blown around a little easier in the wind, I actually found it to do all right in the light breeze. And I believe it's small size to actually be its biggest pro, due to accessibility. In the world today, leaders are cracking down on drone use. Right now, most of these regulations are for drones over 250 grams, but who knows in the future if they're going to tighten down even more. This quad is under 100 grams. You've got quite a bit of range. It's pretty fun. You could upgrade the camera on it. I don't think it would be too hard to make it digital and think of what kind of video you could get with it. This is simply the first prototype of many to come. I have already ordered a ton of parts to continue testing this concept and really refine it. I know I can lose a ton of weight on the frame and different parts. I'm going to try different motors and propellers. I'm really going to refine it and then make another video. If you thought this little quadcopter was cool, please like and subscribe to follow along and see future versions. By using the affiliate links in the description, you are supporting the ongoing research to making this better.